What's up guys, as part of Double XP Week, about a week or so ago, I decided to level up DMRs and give them a shot. Something that a lot of people have clamored and requested I do for a long time now in Battlefield 4, was level up and try DMRs and maybe give a review on them, and I'm considering that. But I did level them up to the point where I have them all unlocked. Not all of the individual weapons or attachments as of yet, but I do have all of them unlocked. Uh, the reason why I never really bothered to unlock them before is because I still have the same opinion that they're a very middle option weapon. And what I mean by that is they can get beat out by auto rifles and carbines in closer or closer medium range. And they get beat out by sniper rifles at long distance. And a good sniper rifle user I find can beat out uh, a DMR at any range really. Uh, and... It's more of the reason why I didn't really choose to use DMRs for so long is because I think it's still a more exclusive middle range option for best results kind of thing. Uh, and uh, well, the, a lot of DMR users will make the argument that a good DMR user would say, well, yeah, a good person with skill can make it useful in any range. But that argument fails for me just because I feel like you can make that argument with almost literally any weapon, especially a sniper rifle because it's already got long and medium range covered and a good aggressive recon player can just make up that difference with his skill set. So that's why that argument was already shot down by me in most instances. Needless to say, before I get long winded again, I did decide to use them, I did decide to unlock them, and when I was trying them out, I did try to stay in medium range or about 50 to 100 meters away. I used a 2 to 4 times magnification scope or a 1 times or red dot if I did decide to get in closer of 50 and more aggressive. And I did try to avoid high traffic areas, picking off targets one by one methodically. I obviously aimed for headshots and I tried to have the, the weapon reset between shots instead of spraying and praying to get kills. So that's the process I used. Uh, the two times event helped me unlock them so much quicker, and I got a chance to try most of them out, albeit briefly. Uh, and there's three of them that caught my attention. For all of them, I used the heavy barrel and the angled grip for DMRs, just uh, to increase the accuracy of aiming down sight accuracy, and the angled grip to reduce the first shot recoil multiplier, as well as time your shot so that the weapon actually resets to its individual point before you fire the next shot for greatest accuracy. I digress. The two I like the most going getting to the main point is the MK11 mod and the SCAR HSV. Uh, they seem to have the best overall base stats with a 45 damage to 15 meters and a drop off to 38 damage at 80 meters. They both have a 260 uh, fire rate per minute. They both have a magazine size of 21 a 620 meters per second bullet velocity and virtually the same reload time of about 2.4 and 2.3 seconds when the, the when the gun's completely empty and 1.85 seconds when there's a round left in the chamber so automatically there's a lot going for these two and they're virtually identical to this point the only real difference between the two is the recoil difference the MK11 mod has a slight deviation to the right as recoil increases whereas the SCAR H has a strictly vertical recoil up and down at the, the decimal point of 1.3, so it's manageable. And that tips me in its favor uh, to the SCAR H over the MK11 mod because all the other stats virtually being equal, there's less of a detriment to recoil compensation that you have to account for. That's why I've enjoyed it. Uh, in terms of spread though, when, a when aiming down sights, the SCAR H has slightly more spread when moving or not moving. But it isn't enough that you'd probably want to immediately start looking at the MK11 mod over it. Now, the third weapon is a bit of an outlier in terms of best stats that also caught my attention, and that's the QBU88. It has, and you'll listen to these stats here, it has a slightly lower damage model of 43 damage up to 8 meters. So a 7 meter difference worse than the previous two and it drops down to 34 minimum damage after 90 meters. It has a fire rate, uh, it, has, it actually has a higher fire rate than the previous two at 310 rounds per minute as opposed to 260. It has a higher muzzle velocity than both of the previous weapons at 670 meters per second per bullet when the bullet moves or gets shot. A smaller magazine size of 11 versus 21 and a much slower reload time of nearly an extra two seconds when there's no rounds in the chamber 
and nearly one second when there's still a round left in the chamber. So at this point you're probably thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? He talked up two weapons with, for the most part, far more superior statistics and now he's trying to sell a shit in an inferior one? Well, lesser as the QBU may be, there are some points to it. It has significantly less vertical recoil than both other weapons. I think it's 1.04 versus 1.3, so it's it's a significant less vertical recoil. It does have more pronounced horizontal recoil to the right, yes, but that's completely negated if you aren't spraying and praying. If you're having more controlled, measured, methodical shots one by one aiming for head or as, as close to the head as you can, it negates this deviation to the right. Also of note, in both hip fire and ADS, both moving and stationary situations, the QBU has significantly less spread than both of the SCAR H and the MK11 mod. So that's something of note to point out for it. Overall, I will say though, I do like the SCAR H SV the most if I was forced to choose one because I feel it has the best overall stats and presentation to show of the DMRs. Uh, an exclusively vertical recoil that's extremely easy to control, a large magazine, a fast reload speed, and muzzle velocity uh, that's pretty much parallel to the other ones. Give it the nod in my book. The MK11 mod, I, I will say this, has the best feel to it, to me. It, it, it almost feels like I'm using uh, like a single shot auto rifle. It just feels right. So if you're more a person that stresses feel as opposed to perfect stats and adjusting your playstyle to the idiosyncrasies of the weapon, I'd highly advise you to try the MK11 mod first. Just go by the feel. It, it has a nice feel to that weapon. Having said that though, I really do like the QBU even though I do feel its statistics minus spread increase are a bit inferior. And the reason for it is, again, as I alluded to, the feel. I found success with this weapon before I even looked up the stats. Like when I tried that weapon out for the first time, I was like, wow, I'm doing pretty good with this thing. It just feels right. And sometimes a right feeling weapon that you can give regular success with, success with does tend to trump perfect stats. Having said that though, let's, let's close by saying this overall. I, uh, DMRs in general will never replace uh, full-on sniper rifles for, to me. Uh, I find sniper rifles much easier to use and they're a lot more damaging even if you don't manage to get the kill. If you're able to flank an enemy, the enemy doesn't see you, he's, he's completely dead. With a DMR that should be the case as well, especially if you're a good shot. But if you, but like outside of 90 meters or the max drop off for DMRs, if you miss one bullet and he all of a sudden sees where you are, you're in much bigger trouble. Because you're going to need to land at least two to three. So as opposed to a sniper rifle, it'll just be one, say, neck and above. But let me know your thoughts for these weapons. Let me know if you are a DMR fan, if you're not a DMR fan, if you have any logic to the contrary, shoot it my way. Uh, if you hate on them, bash them in the comments. Let's, let's start a discussion. See you later.